All right. Uh, all right. So today we're going to talk about the exam, and well, I'm going to spend a whole lot of time on it. Um, I'll post the solutions to the exam in the next day or so. I, I already scanned it. I just need to like post it on the web. I'll do it when I post your notes and stuff later. Um, here's the way the exam works. Let me, just, let me just write it down. I had originally told everyone that the way I was going to do it is that problems 1 through 9 were, what, 20 points a piece? And then number 10, A, B, or C, you had to do two of those, right? That those were, what, 30 points a piece? So you would have got, what here, 180 out of this possible, and out of this, 60, right? Which means a total of 240 points were possible. I just decided when I was grading it to cut all those in half, okay? So instead of 20s for 1 through 9, it was 10. And that made this 90. And then here, instead of 30 points a piece, 15 a piece, that was 30. That means there was 120 points possible. And so I graded your test out of 100 points. So you could have gotten 120 on this test. That was the highest you could get was 100. And it would be 120, not 120 out of 120. It would be, a, it would be 120. So there was a 20-point curve to the test if you want to look at it that way. Okay? I think the highest grade was a 108, then a 103, something like that. So what I'll do is I'll call your name. Um, on your test, when you get it back, you'll see a, your, your test. And on the top right-hand corner, you should have a couple. I'm just going to make these numbers up. 63, 72, then it'll say something like, I don't know, uh, 97, 82, and they'll say C, uh, no, B and C, something like that. The top, the top number is the grade on this exam. The second number is your grade in the class. And then whatever numbers next are next are what you need to average the rest of the way for those grades. So like this student got a 63 on this test, has a 72 in the class, would need to maintain a 97 average for a B in the class, we need an 82 for a C, and an A is not possible. So if, it's, if an A isn't up there, it means it's not possible. Okay? Questions on that? All right. Uh, Michael? I graded yours already. Abby? We need to talk, Abby. It's nothing bad, but I need to talk to you. Okay? Um, Crystal? Cody, Jeff, Frank, Frank S, Elias, Katie, Jacob, Jasmine, Daniel, Perez, Courtney, Uh, Kyle. Courtney, I don't think I put the letters next to the numbers for you. You know, like what you need for a B, C, A. So if you're confused about it, let me know. Um, Myra. John Buchanan. Same with you, John. I didn't put the letters next to it. I'm sorry. I can, I can straighten that out later. And Caitlin, I didn't do yours either. Caitlin and Daniel, I didn't do yours either. So it's like great on this. Overall grade, A, B, C. Okay. okay. Or no, no, other way around. CVA. CVA. Okay, so for you, this is your grade on this test. Overall grade, what you need for a C, a B, and an A. Okay. All right, now here's, here's, uh, here's what I did. I sent an email out on Frank. I called you. I did. I looked at you, too, and I was like, hmm, maybe he changed his name. Okay. <laughs> 
Listen, this is, this is very important what I'm about to tell you, okay? Wednesday I graded these. Thursday was the last day to drop the class. I sent out an email saying, here, you know, go check your grade, right? I posted the grades online. If, if, it, if you cannot mathematically pass the class, you should consider dropping the class, right? Then I went to go drop a few students who requested to be dropped, and I looked at all the grades, and I, and I kind of took the initiative to drop students who couldn't mathematically pass anymore. Now the reason I did this is because it's easier for me to drop someone and reinstate them than it is for someone to not drop and then try and drop after the drop date. So let's say I, let's say I withdrew you, because some, some people in here might have been withdrawn, they don't even know it. Then if we talk about your grade, and maybe there's a way mathematically we can figure out a way. I, I drop a quiz or something, you can still pass. I, it's easier for me to put you back in the class than it would be for me to have not dropped you, and then you're like, hey, I, I really wish I would have been able to drop and not been able to. Now, now you can't. Does that make sense? <clears throat> so after class, please go check to see if you're still in the class. All right? And if you're not and you want to be in here still, we need to talk. Okay? Yes. All right. That's the first time I've ever done that, so that's why I'm kind of like, oh, I don't know how it's going to work. What's that? Well, it's not something that I can just do, but I have to fill out paperwork, but I can do it. Yeah, you just, once the drop date's passed, I can't, I can't, no one's going to be able to drop you. So, I kind of made the call on that. All right. I also sent an email with the homework for today. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, no, I didn't. I, I gave you the weekend off to not think about math for, for a while or get caught up, whatever it may be. Um, but I did ask you to do that quiz. I said that you would have that. You have to use some technology, perhaps, to solve that second problem. Remember what I'm talking about? So I will collect that now. It was that take-home quiz, two problems. One had to do with finding the absolute max and min. The other one had to do with verifying the mean value theorem. Thank you. Did you try and get an answer somehow? Well, I, I, I didn't get Okay, but you have, you have the equation that you would have had to have solved. Okay, that's something. I wanted to see what people would do. Okay, well, better than nothing, right? Yeah. Okay. Myra, I've got your test here. Don't go too far. No, Myra. Here we go. Myra, your test is up here when you're ready for it. Right here. Oh, we can talk later. Let me, yeah.
All right, we are going to, yeah, if you have any questions on your test or anything like that, please just bring it to me after class. All right, so I did not ask you to do anything at home, but, uh, you know, maybe you did watch the video for 4 or 3. If, if you did, great. If you didn't, you should be able to get by here. Um, we're going to move out of uh, section 4, 1, and 4, 2. That's the last thing we covered for the test. 4, 3 talks about the derivative and how the derivative affects the shape of a graph. And this section, the next one, the next three sections we're going to do today are all kind of connected, all right? So if you have any questions as I'm going through this, please ask. Uh, the first note here has to do with the first derivative. So remember, the derivative is just the slope of the tangent line, right? Yes, everyone? Okay. Derivative is the slope of the tangent line. So if, we, if our slope is positive, right, if our slope is a positive number, that should mean that our function is in, increasing. So look at this blue function here, and look at the tangent line at all those points. So the green dot's moving across the function. Notice that the derivative... The slope of the tangent line is always positive. So if the slope's positive, that means your function must be going up as you move from left to right. That, that makes sense? Positive slope means your function's increasing. Now, negative slope, so if your derivative is negative, this should be backwards, that's a typo. If your derivative is negative, then your function must be going down as you move from left to right. Does that make sense? All right, and then of course, if your derivative is zero, then it's flat the whole time, then your function must be constant. So it's just a flat line. And that's what that first note in this section says. If the derivative is positive on some interval a, b, then f is said to be increasing on that interval. If the derivative is negative on an interval, then it's said to be de decreasing. And if it's zero on an interval, then it's constant. So this tells us, that we can, we can look at a derivative and tell a lot about the function. Here's an example of a function where it switches. So as I move from left to right, I'm going up right now, right? I'm increasing, and my derivative is positive, right? And I have the, the line is green. When I get to the top, my derivative is zero, isn't it? Flat line, turned purple. And then once I go past this, my derivative is negative, which means I should be going down on the function. Until I get to the bottom, it'll flatten out again, derivative is zero, and then the derivative will be positive again. All right, with all of that said, we have what's called the first derivative test. The first derivative test says, suppose c is a critical number of a continuous function. What does it mean to be a critical number of a continuous function? What, what happens at a critical number of a function? Either what? What's zero? The tangent line has a slope of zero. The derivative is zero, right? So to be a critical number means the derivative is zero there, right? Or what? There was another thing we checked for. Does not exist. So the derivative doesn't exist there. So this is saying... If you, if you get some value, c, like let's say 2, right? If you go to 2 on this function and the derivative is 0 there or the derivative is undefined there or doesn't exist there, then there's this check you can do. If the derivative, if the derivative changes from positive to negative at that point, then we have a local maximum. If the derivative changes from negative to positive, then we have a local minimum. And if it doesn't change at all, we don't have a local maximum or a local minimum. So let's, let's try and figure out what that means by looking at this here. All right, is, everyone cl uh, is it clear to everyone that where my arrow is right now is a local maximum? It's the highest point on that graph um, locally. So if I move my slider around, right now, to the left of that point, what's my derivative? Positive. To the right of that point, what's my derivative? Negative. At that point, what's my derivative? Zero. 
So I have a critical number at 2, don't I? Right there? At, wait, is it not 2? It's not 2, is it? What value is that? Oh, it's some crazy number. Never mind. So it's some x value. I, I don't know what it is. Somewhere in here. If I go up to that, my derivative there is 0. To the left of it, I'm, my derivative is positive. To the right of it, my derivative is negative. So according to the first derivative test, if it changes from positive to negative, that means